Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. O I A A A A A Ha. Are you here? Get my random mathematicians way to come back to another video. That was a pretty exotic intro, mate. Have you checked out Stamage.com, Stamage.eu and my personal tea string shop yet? If you haven't done so already, links down there in the description. Great deals going on over there up until Christmas. Now, recently I was playing around in Desmos a tiny little bit with parabolas and intersections of parabolas and turning par parabolas sideways and the like. And then something came to my mind. So I was playing around with basically just uh, just the inverse function of the parabola on both branches, positive and negative branch, meaning I was dealing with the square root functions. Okay, just plotting them. This right here is the square root of x. Let's call it f. And this down here is going to be negative the square root of x. Let's call it g. And yeah, this is just a sideways parabola, you could say. And then what I did is I played around with a few figurines, um, cycloids, etc. And ultimately also with a circle. And well, circles actually have a nice property that um, if you have a circle of radius one, for example, radius really doesn't matter for this problem. Let's go with radius one, okay, for our sake. Um, if you bring them closer and closer to the parabola, eventually at one point it's going to meet with our parabola. Um, I call it a parabola, but it's square root functions. But let's just go with parabola here because it's a sideways parabola. Cool thing about parabolas is that they are basically symmetric um, on the axis that we got right here, meaning the intersection point that we have up here, let's call it x1 and y1, can be found down here too, just with a negative sign. So this right here is going to be negative x1 and uh, y1, <coughs> basically. Um, no, the other way around, um, x1 and negative y1. Um, but where I want to go at here is um, in, in Desmos you can't really um, find out nicely what the intersection of those two are going to be. I mean at some point they are going to meet and at some point those two are going to be tangent to one another. This square root function and our circle that we are going to have. Same thing down here. And um, I want to find out what the intersection points actually are. And as mentioned before we are going to go with a circle of radius one here. So r is equal to one. And ultimately um, it's the same task as finding out what the center of our circle is going to be on the x-axis. And this what we are going to do today. We are going to find out what the center point of our circle is going to be, so the x coordinate and ultimately what our um, coordinates of the intersection points are going to be. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video. By the way, this content has been sponsored by Pre and once again more information at the end of the video. Now at first um, let us write up the equation of the circle. This is where you can actually get started. This is what I did at first. I mean the equations for the parabola, we got these already so why not write out the equation for the circle. Now the circle in normal case if it's centered at 0, 0 has the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. In our case r is 1 so we are going to get equal to 1 squared or 1 out on the other side. Now what about um, our circle? Well actually our circle is shifted c units to the right in some kind of way. Meaning what we actually get as a shift in our x coordinate is an equation for the circle being x minus c whole thing squared and then plus y squared being equal to radius squared or in other words one. This right here is the equation for our circle. And now what you can basically do, this is the first way I went about it, was to plug in the coordinates that we got right here for our intersection points into our different branches of the square roots and our circle and then just solve a system of equations. This is something that you can certainly do but it takes quite an amount of computation and it's an absolute pain in the butthole. This is why I went with a different route after um, basically finishing up the first path, okay, to the first story arc in our dark anime story. If you take a look, and I mentioned this before, at our um, circle meeting up with our parabola, what we got here actually are tension points. They are just kissing, okay? These two functions, these two nice individuals, thick individuals, is it just me or is that circle looking kind of thick? They are just kissing a tiny little bit. They are tension to one another. Meaning, at the point where they are kissing, okay, where they are um, using their butts to just. Um, yeah, dance a tiny little bit, okay, in the in the club. And never mind you, you probably know where I'm getting at here. Um, they're actually going to have the same slope. I mean, it does make sense. If they are tension to one another, they're going to have the same slope. If you zoom in infinitesimally, infinitesimally small, I hate that word so much. 
thumbs up if you can pronounce it nicely. Thumbs down, you, you can't really do this anymore if you can't pronounce it nicely anymore. So, um, meaning what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate, it really doesn't matter which one we do, let's, let's go with the first one. If we differentiate our function with respect to x and then differentiate our circuits equation with respect to x2, if we set their derivatives, so y, prime equal, then we are going to um, basically have a nice equation which we can solve by plugging in either of the points. So if we go with this one, we plug in this point because they meet up there. So what we are going to do is we are going to differentiate our f at first, let's call it y prime. And obviously we are going to track the exponent of one half down, then we are going to reduce it by one, so one over square root of x. That was easy. Now we are going to implicitly differentiate this um, function that we have up here, this mapping. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the power rule here and then the chain rule, so tracking the two to the front. Then we are going to get x minus c um, because we, we reduce the power by one. And in the derivative, x minus c differentiate with respect to x is just one. So okay, that was easy. Now on the other side, what we are going to get is zero because one differentiate with respect to x is just zero. And differentiating y with respect to x well, keep in mind that y is a function with respect to x up here. Thing is, we can Im implicitly um, solve this equation up here for y and then it's going to be a function of x. Now, if you implicitly differentiate this up here, you're going to use the power rule at first. So two times y, tracking the exponent down, reducing the exponent by one. And then we are going to take the inner derivative, dy dx, which is just y prime. Now you might notice that the twos are going to cancel out on both sides because not equal to zero, they are the successor of one. So by definition, you can cancel them out on both sides. The cancellation rule holds in natural numbers, uh, also the real numbers. Now what you can do is you can uh, subtract this part on both sides, giving you a negative x minus c, which is the same as um, c minus x on the side. And then we can divide through by y under the condition that it's not equal to zero uh, in our case. And this is going to be equal to y prime. As mentioned before, those two are going to be equal at the point where both functions are going to kiss. Meaning, this right here is equal to one half times one over the square root of x. Now the cool thing about square roots, etc., is that they are, they are going to be preserved somehow under differentiation. If you take a look at one over the square root of x, this is the same as one over y, because this was our function y at the beginning. So we can actually replace our square root of x that we got right here with uh, c minus x, so y by y, being equal to one half times one over y. And now, as easy as it is, one over y is going to cancel out on both sides. And now we got a fan equation. Namely, we are going to get c minus x is equal to um, one half. By the way, what I did here is basically um, I plugged in x1 and y1 into here. So um, we are looking for the point where both of these are going to kiss, meaning we actually have to plug in our coordinates. But for sake of argument, it really doesn't matter in, in this context too much. So if you plug in x1 and y1, this really doesn't change because 1 over square root of x1 is the same as y evaluated at um, x1, which is the same as y1. So you see, this really doesn't change the argument at all. Meaning, to to make it a bit more clear, this is actually the same as c minus x1 is equal to 1 half. Okay, you can do it like this. Let's put a little index here for now. And now we can solve this whole thing for x1 by uh, uh, adding x1 on both sides and subtracting 1 half, giving us overall that x1 is actually nothing other. So the part of this point that we have up here, um, yes, exactly c minus 1 half. And now the cool thing is, since they both meet at this point, we can also plug the coordinates into our equation for the circle that we got up here. So what we are going to do now is um, we are going to plug x1 into here, meaning we are going to get um, x1 minus c squared and then plus y1 squared is equal to 1. Now one thing you might notice is that we got x1 minus c in here. And all of this is going to be squared. So we can factor out a negative one, really doesn't matter, turning this whole thing in c minus x1, basically. But we know what c minus x1 is. This is nothing other than one half. Meaning this right here is one half squared, or in other words, one quarter. Now we can subtract one quarter on both sides. One minus one quarter is going to give you three over four, taking the positive square root, because y is going to take a positive value up here, y1. We are going to get that y1 is nothing other than the square root of three over two overall. 
Yeah, that was easy, right? I mean, now we found out what y1 is. The last thing that we need to find out is what cr and what x1 are exactly. And do you know what the cool thing about y1 is? I told you about that before. Y1 is nothing other than y evaluated at x1. And we also know what y is. Y is nothing other than the square root of x in our context. Meaning, this is the square root of x1. But x1, we solve for it, is nothing other than c minus 1 half. And as we now found out from the equation of the circle by plugging in the point, y1 is also nothing other than the square root of 3 over 2. And this is very easy to solve. Now we are just going to square both sides, giving us that c, or the absolute value of everything, but we know that c is going to be a, a positive value overall, so we can just ignore the, the absolute values here. So c minus 1 half is nothing other than 3 divided by 4. Now what we can do is add 1 half on both sides, giving us c is equal to 3 quarters plus 1 half. Expanding 1 half by 2 is going to give us 2 over 4, giving us 5 over 4 overall for our center. So the center of our circle of radius 1 is going to be 5 over 4 and 0. And we know what y1 is. y1 is square root of 3 over 2. So the last thing to find out is x1. And we know that x1 is nothing other than, we have this down here, um, c minus 1 half. But we know what c is. c is nothing other than 3 quarters plus 1 half minus 1 half, cancelling out, giving us 3 quarters overall. And these are the coordinates. And as I told you before, symmetry tells us that the other point where they are going to kiss is going to be at, uh, at, at 3 quarters, once again, a negative square root of 3 over 2. And this basically concludes this little um, exercise on parabolic geometry and circuits. And I really like this one. It's very easy to solve, but very satisfying once you get behind plugging all the values into um, your equation of the circle and actually getting a hang of doing the differentiation. And if you want to take a look at more problems that involve circles, parabolas, calculus, and all of that, then I invite you to try out the contents of today's sponsor, Priya, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now the best thing by far about Brilliant is their interactive learning concept and their visuals that you can play around with firsthand. And if you are a sucker for visuals, animations and just playing around with the things that you want to learn, then Brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. With their nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics, algebra, calculus, physics, general relativity, chemistry, philosophy, computer sciences, they Definitely got you covered, no matter what you want to learn, no matter if you are still at high school or at university. They definitely have something in their repertoire that you can use for your daily studies. And now you might ask yourself how you can actually learn with Brilliant. I'll tell ya. They are going to provide you with so-called interactive courses. They are courses where you are going to fill in exercises, you are going to try to solve certain problems from a basic standpoint up to a higher level and all of this will be underlined with graphics and visuals as mentioned before. Interactive content that you can play around first hand with and it's just overall a very good experience in my opinion and I just love to visit Brilliant at least once a week to learn something new for myself. And there is literally no better place to learn something like calculus, functions, graphs than over on Brilliant. It's seriously the best source you can hope for and I have never found something similar that could beat Brilliant in their um, field that they are exercising on. So if this feels like it's something for you, if you want to try it out firsthand, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash flamblemaps. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, but more importantly, the first 200 people to make use of the link get 20% off an annual premium subscription, which is a great deal considering how much content they have available on their website already. By the way, Christmas is also around the corner, so this makes for a really great gift, gifting someone the gift of learning. Maybe you have your son who is interested in STEM or maybe a good friend or an, another family member. Really doesn't matter. Brilliant subscriptions make for a really great gift and your loved ones really gonna get a kick out of it. Trust me. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. Other than that, don't forget to check out Flemmy's Wood, my woodworking channel and all the other videos in the advent calendar playlist linked down there. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a fucking flammable day. See ya.